Hi there, my name's Katie Lee and I'm Head of Community Relations at St Stephen's School in Perth, Western Australia. Many of you watching today would be considering a move to Australia and I just wanted to say first of all, great choice. And you'll be starting to look at those logistics and the things you need to tick off about making the big move down under. For those of you with a family, it does kind of add a bit of a layer of consideration as you want to look at where you want to bring your children up and what school might be right for your child and your family. So I wanted to start by giving a bit of an overview about what to expect with the video today so you know where to follow along. First of all, I'm going to start about some of the differences between education in the UK and Australia so you know what to expect and how to navigate some of the enrolments and paperwork. Then I'm going to touch on who St Stephen's School are, what we're about, where we're located and a bit more about what makes us tick and how we might be right for your family. Then I want to touch on the wonderful lifestyle that we're so lucky to enjoy here in Perth and I'm going to talk to some experts in our community about their own stories of migration and some areas that might be good uh, family friendly places to settle um, with your children and your family for your future. So I'm really excited to share this information with you today. So I think we best just get started and get into it. Thanks. To set the scene, I think it's important to talk about the differences between education in the UK and Australia, mainly in how they're referred to, as sometimes the same words can be used to, to refer to very different things. So apologies for referring to my notes, but there is quite a bit of information to get through. In the UK, there's two main types of school. There's the state funded schools, which are also referred to as comprehensive schools, grammar schools or high schools. And education at these schools is free, as in not paid for by the family, apart from any special areas or activities of interest. Then there's the independent schools, which sometimes call themselves public schools. Tuition at these schools does come at a cost. And in the UK, sometimes it's a very high prohibitive cost for families to access education. In Australia, there's three types of schools. Now listen carefully as this is where the wording kind of comes into play. There are public schools, which mean they are funded by the government and come at no or minimal cost to the family. There's also private schools, which like the UK independent schools do come at a cost. However, in Australia, there's more of a range of these schools where fees vary from more affordable prices right through to the upper echelon. And there are independent schools, which sometimes are referred to as independent public and independent private. Independent schools still operate to the same curriculum, but they have more flexibility in operations when it comes to decisions around staffing and education outcomes. So they can best cater for what's uh, good for their own community. St Stephen's School is an independent private school catering for a student's entire schooling journey, starting in pre-kindergarten, also known as preschool or nursery in the UK, right through to year 12. I know the school structure, names of school stages and ages in certain year groups differ between various parts of the UK and Australia. I would recommend looking in between them. There's too many to go through for the purpose of this video, but it would really help in knowing where your child will be placed. The age range of children for school year cutoffs is also different. Some cut off from July that year, others in February, March and September. In Australia, a child's schooling can be broken down into three main areas. There's preschool or early years, which consists of pre-kindergarten ages three and four and kindergarten ages four and five. These are not compulsory in Australia. There's the primary area, which consists of pre-primary, the first compulsory year of education in Australia, with students aged between five and six, up to year six, where students are aged 11 or 12. Then there's secondary school. Year seven to year nine are sometimes known as middle school, and year 10 to 12 are known as senior school, but overall regarded as secondary or high school. Some other differences to consider, research and ask about include the range of subjects on offer and extracurricular programs, exams and pathways for study, programs for students who excel in gifted and talented programs or those who need a little extra help in learning enrichment, and school year times. In Australia, they run from January or February to November or December with dates varying between public and private schools. There are four terms with extended summer holidays over Christmas and New Year. Book lists and stationery are provided by the family, along with lunches and snacks also provided by the family or purchased at the school canteen. Applications for enrolment in Australia also go direct to each school. In terms of that process, families start by registering their interest with the school, usually online through the school's website. Private schools often have intake years where they take on more classes or streams. St Stephen's school intake years are kindergarten, year five and year seven, but we accept enrolments for all years depending on availability. The school then follows up with a request to complete an expression of interest requesting the information including 
copies of your child's last two school reports, any medical or education specialist reports that may impact your child's learning, a photocopy of your child's full birth certificate and passport, current immunisation record and photocopies of citizenship papers or visas for the child and parents. To round out this topic, I spoke to our Head of English and Languages at our Duncraig campus, Mr Howie Jakeway, who migrated to Perth from Northborough in the UK in 2012 with his wife and two young daughters. So you moved to Perth in 2012 with the family. Yeah. What was behind the move? It was driven very much by family. Um, my wife's parents and my wife's sister live in Perth and, my, uh, and they've been here for, for a while. So we wanted to bring our two girls up. My, my eldest daughter's 13, youngest is nine. And we wanted to bring them up with as much family around them as possible. And we've been to Perth a couple of times, fell in love with the place, the outdoor life, the, the lifestyle. We moved from uh, a little village in, in England called Northborough, which is just outside Peterborough, uh, the, the quintessential English village, one pub, one shop, one church, uh, and a church that's sort of five, six, seven hundred years old. Um, and most of our weekends we'd go to, we'd go to Sandringham, where, where, the, where the Queen sometimes live, or we'd go to the local park. But for the vast majority of the, the time, the weather, you, you, you were stuck in, indoors, really. So, so moving to Perth, we got the camping bug in the first year, went to Calbarry, uh, really, really liked it. Um, and we've been, we've been camping all over Western Australia, bush camping, camping elsewhere. Uh, and our girls love it. You know, they, they get to experience the great outdoors. They've seen a wealth of animals and they've been driving on deserted beaches where we've driven four wheel driving and stuff like that. And, and the, the things, the, the experiences that they've had, my daughter's been bush camping up in the, um, in the Kimberley with the school. Where, where she swag camped for, for, a, for a week uh, and saw amazing things. So uh, our lifestyle bears no resemblance to, to what we had in the, in the UK. We, we, we travel widely we, and we, we pitch our tent wherever and the girls get out and explore and it is wonderful to see. Um, regarding schooling, what are some of the biggest difference between, differences between schooling in the UK and Australia? So I've got two daughters. I've got a daughter in the primary school and I've got a daughter in the secondary school. So. What I've noticed about the primary school, particularly my eldest daughter who went through the primary school and is now in secondary school here, at the primary school there's, there's a much more greater emphasis on play-based learning, on investigating and, and learning through play. Uh, and I think that allows younger students a chance to be children for a lot longer before formal learning really, really kicks in. So in the secondary school, what I've noticed with my eldest child is that there is still that emphasis on, on play-based learning, on, on collaborative learning, on experiential learning, learning through experimenting. There's a lot more collaboration that goes on. And so the emphasis is less on formal didactic teaching and, and more on um, students collaborating and, and learning together um, in a very, very informal setting. And I think that, that works really, really well for, for both my girls. And how was the transition for your girls? They found it relatively easy. Um, when my daughter started here, she, she made friends very, very quickly. She was embraced into the school community very, very quickly. Um, and I don't think she struggled at all. Um, my youngest daughter was still in daycare at the time, so she, her whole schooling has been through the Australian system. But my eldest daughter, Sophie, she didn't, she didn't struggle at all. Um, she found it very, very seamless. Apart from working at St Stephen's School, what about the school made it seem like the right place to send your girls? St Stephen's is very committed to, to community um, and being part of a, a community that, that embraces faith and embraces learning in a very caring, supportive, mutual manner was, was really attractive to me. I think the, the school's values aligned very much with our uh, values as a, as a family and I think St Stephen's is such a rich, caring, engaging, powerful community that actually I really wanted my daughters to be part of uh, a school where they could learn in very, very different contexts through, through school camps, through, through learning in the classroom and, and just through a, a very, very caring, uh, supportive community. And do you have any <coughs> tips for families watching who might be making the move beyond the schooling, just about the move itself? I would say that a lot of mistakes that, that families make when they choose to migrate to Australia is they do it blind. And I, and I, and I would say that 
you need to do your research, you need to come and, and experience Perth or wherever you migrate to and, 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 and have a good look round. I th I th there, there is no substitute for, for coming and seeing whether you think you would enjoy living here or not. And, I, and, I, and I, we, we, we'd been here twice before, so we knew what we were, we were coming to. So it was a very, very low risk uh, decision to make. Mm. But so many families say, well, well, we'll move to Australia without really understanding what the, the, the lifestyle is like and, and, and what life is like in Australia. And you can't learn that from a migration document. You can't learn that from watching a, a video. You mm. have to experience it in the flesh. And I would say, I would say, don't rush it. Take your time, do your research, and actually experience what life is like before you make that decision, because it's possibly the biggest decision that you'll ever make in your life. Yeah. Any regrets for you about making no. the move? Uh, the we we miss family in in England. Um, we we miss seeing their faces, but Skype and Zoom has, has made the world a very small place anyway. Yeah. So, so we can Skype people and people have come over to Australia to visit us anyway. So we've always said that, that we, we, we could live a very long life and this would still be the, very, the best decision that we've ever made in our lives because our girls are so happy at St Stephen's and they're so happy living in Australia. So no regrets whatsoever. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us, Howie. You're welcome. St Stephen's School is a Christ-centred, student-focused and community-based school of the Uniting Church. It's spread over two campuses in Perth's northern suburbs. Our Dunkraig campus was founded in 1984. It is about 20 minutes drive from the Perth CBD and consists of the main campus housing Year 3 to 12 and the Early Learning Centre across the road, which is home to our pre-kindergartners to Year 2. The Karamar campus is further north, about 30 minutes drive from the city. It has all years from pre-kindergarten to Year 12 on the one site. Both campuses have modern learning facilities and are lined with mature trees and leafy gardens. We are also very lucky to have a third site just over an hour south of Perth. It is a rural property known as the Cartagen Centre, which translates to the Knowledge Centre in the language of the local Noongar people, the traditional owners of the land. The Cartagen Centre provides a wonderful place for staff and students to explore and learn from nature and connect with one of the oldest cultures in the world. The school's mission to serve God, serve one another is underpinned by five key values, faith, learning, service, care and community. We welcome people from all faiths and backgrounds. The school does not have a chapel or a chaplain, which was a decision made by the founders, but it is built around our pastoral care program, where each student is assigned a house that they remain in throughout their schooling. In the primary years, the houses provide a sense of belonging as students represent the house in carnivals and competitions. Secondary school is where the structure of the house system really comes into play, with students being part of a daily homeroom led by two teachers that they form strong relationships with over the years. This creates a feeling of being a home away from home, knowing they have their homeroom and leaders as a constant and form friendships with students from various year levels that encourage a setting for mentoring. This balance between learning and care is one of the things that sets St Stephen's School apart, with each pillar going hand in hand. As I mentioned, we are student focused, a St Stephen's School education puts the child at the centre, where they are encouraged to find their passion through personalised learning and create their own path, whether that be towards university or a trade, through the school's leading vocational education and training program, also known as VET. Our VET program has issued more than 500 certificate qualifications to further students' post-school careers. We offer a blended model of on-site VET delivery, internal taught by teachers at the school and off-site where students visit a variety of training organisations and workplaces to learn on the job. St Stephen's School students have completed VET qualifications in a diverse range of fields, including electrotechnology, automotive, business, beauty, building and construction, education, including early childhood and education support, media, music, health, community services and cyber security. The school is a solid academic performer, yet the traits of St Stephen's School students learn, such as teamwork, humility, Leadership and compassion go way beyond the classroom. Our service learning programs see students better the lives of others on a local, national and international scale, taking them to various locations, including India, Cambodia, Malaysia, South Africa, and closer to home, the Kimberley region of WA, to learn about different ways of life and enrich the lives of those they meet. I also just wanted to quickly touch on being a community-based school. 
We're really lucky to have a close-knit community where you often see families hanging around after school at the playground for catch-ups, going on yearly camping trips and taking part in parent events through the Schools Foundation. We also have really great ties with local groups and councils that open up great opportunities for learning and play. Perth offers a really wonderful lifestyle with something for everyone. There is a great balance between inner city living with bustling cafe strips and restaurants for the foodies out there, and we're blessed to have beautiful beaches along the WA coast. There's also the opportunity to wander out yonder and explore some of our region for those looking for a bit more adventure. St Stephen's School is located in the fast growing northern suburbs of Perth. It offers a great lifestyle with a huge, strong community of UK expats. Aaron Green is one of the parents of our school with his two sons and daughter attending our Duncraig campus and early learning centre. He's also an established real estate agent working in the area and joins us to share his thoughts on some great family friendly areas close to St Stephen's School. What is it about the Northern Suburbs as a whole that kind of is attractive in a lifestyle um, for buyers? Every single, uh, I guess, budget price you might be working with have great parks in the local suburbs, close proximity to major shops, close to the beach, close to freeway access heading to the city and, you know, further north. So it's a really good base point as far as gaining access to different locations. Um, but the beautiful WA coastline is um, the best coastline in the world, I would say. <laughs> Sounds like it ticks a lot of the boxes for families kind of looking for that move and looking for places to settle. Um, you mentioned you've, you've got a, a few suburbs that you would recommend um, people look at in terms of close uh, being close to the St Stephen's School campuses. Um, I just wanted to go through them and mention them quickly. Yes. Um, starting around the Duncraig campus, we've got Sorrento. Yep. Yeah, so you've got Sorrento, which is more of a, obviously on your coastal um, side. Yep. Um, it's a very community-based uh, suburb. Um, not high density living, so it hasn't been overdeveloped. And Hillary's is nearby there. What kind of houses would people get in the Hillary's area? Yeah, so Hillary's is a great option as well, where you've got, again, uh, a particular pocket called Harbour Rise, and in Harbour Rise you've got more small, low-maintenance blocks um, with big two-storey, you know, homes. Yep. Um, you've got another part of, um, you know, Hillary's that you've got big blocks, you know, older homes in the 90s, you know, early 2000s, and then you've got another part in Hillary's, which is, again, in a different price bracket, and then you might be looking at, say, 70s in, into the 80s. So Hillary's is a very good option as well. Cool. We've well, got this versatile style of homes, um, block sizes, year of property, etc. So, yeah, it's yeah. a good area to look at. And it's right near the marina as well, which is a big draw card. And the coastal line, and if you love your exercise, you've got that, you know, coastal strip that you can do all sorts on. So Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then Duncraig, as a when that, we're in the Duncraig campus as yes. we speak, um, as a suburb itself, what what does Duncraig offer families? Um, it's yeah, very high, highly community focused. Um, a lot of the people that are buying into Duncraig are very much high education focused, whether it's state schooling or, or private schooling, being our school here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, very consistent with the type of people. A lot of people that buy here will stay here for a long time. Um, so the turnover in the area, you know, isn't kind of two, three years. A lot of the time when you see a family come into the suburb, they'll be buying their home for 10, 14, 15 years. So a bit further north around our Caramar campus, we've got Ashby and Tapping, some of the suburbs you've selected. Can you tell yeah. us a bit about those ones? Yeah, so I guess looking at those two suburbs, they are smaller home, like household homes. So it's not like a, a cluttered suburb with lots of households um, and various options for smaller blocks and, and bigger blocks, um, much newer homes. Um, and value for money, you know, under 650000 is exceptional. So that could be a really good location. Um, very close to Lake Joondala as well, and still close to get onto Burns Beach Road, head straight down to the beach. Um, and you've got big shopping centres close by as well, um, not just uh, one option. So I um, definitely recommend to look at those two suburbs. It's yeah, and I suppose a bit more of a general question about people looking to move. Um, what kind of tips would you give them from your experience? Yeah, so if you haven't engaged with, say, a buyer's agent, which there's plenty of options out there to, to do so, and if you're fairly green to the area, maybe don't buy straight away. Uh, maybe come across, um, place yourself into a family rental, sit in the property for maybe 12 months, get a good feel for the suburb, the area, because what you think you might want to buy now could be actually very different in, tw in 12 months' time. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks, Katie. That's Thank great. You. Cheers. I hope some of what we've been able to share today is helpful in you and your family making the move. If you would like to know any more information, feel free to visit our website at www.stevens.wa.edu.au where you can look at some testimonials and even take a virtual tour. All the best with your move and the future.